But just briefly, I, I'm very aware that I've got the Cypriot foreign minister in front of me, and one way in which many outside observers of Cyprus say that Cyprus could easily and reasonably quickly change the economic outlook for your country, for your island, is to get serious at last about the normalization and then reunification process with the north of your island by talking direct to Turkey. The Turks have offered you immediate summit talks. Why don't you just say yes? First of all, they have not offered immediate summit talks. They want the usual kind of talks between the two communities, whereas it's we who say that we should stop pretending and the main problem is between Turkey and Cyprus and the, the way that the problem is going to be resolved is talking directly to Turkey. Secondly, do you think that it is right for Turkey at this moment to be perceived that is feeling our weakness and is trying to take advantage of, uh, of this weakness for her own uh, benefit. But if and I may say right? so, that is the language of enmity. It's the old thinking. What we've seen is your country in 2004 rejecting a UN peace plan brokered by Kofi Annan when the Turkish side accepted it. Mm -hmm. Over the most recent negotiating period, you have seemed disinterested in achieving a peace. Surely now, given the fundamental problems your country faces, it is time to change the language, change the thinking, and really engage. The last thing that the Cypriots would like to hear at the moment is that all this economic debacle that has taken place was prepared in order to bring them or force them into accepting a settlement that they don't like. You mentioned the referendum of that time. Well, they might like it when a bit you more put now. ballot boxes the ballot boxes bring results that one has to respect, whether it's a yes or whether no. I said but yes Minister, at that Minister, referendum. For example, let's just talk for a second about yeah, gas. But let's talk it, about it is gas. Wrong there is no to way. Accuse people. It is wrong to accuse people when they have taken a decision in a democratic way because they had the choice. They had the choice to say yes, they had the choice to, to say no. I have said yes. And today I was a minority and now I am obliged to respect the decision but, of the people, like any other democratic person. But, Minister, circumstances world. have changed. And if we just look at one other way in which Cypriots hope they might escape from the, the terrible crisis they face, they look at the potential of the gas reserves off your shores. There is no way those gas reserves can be exploited uh, peacefully and successfully without a long term, peaceful, stable relationship with Turkey. I am, I am surprised that this. Uh, uh, axiom is so easily acceptable that Turkey can dictate to another independent sovereign country who is acting legitimately according to the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea that Turkey has the right to dictate what is going to happen about uh, the wealth that exists in the economic zone of Cyprus. Um, we does, are it, talking. does it make any difference to you that the EU, the Commission, leading European politicians all want to see your government engage in a new way on the Cyprus problem? If but I we are go way. who said that we are not going to engage? Well, and nothing is I'm it, hearing from you suggests that there's any so, new thinking. You haven't seen nothing yet. But let me tell you something. Is it so unreasonable that we say, let us wait until October? Because now we cannot focus on the efforts for the solution of the Cyprus problem as our primary duty to our citizens is to put the economy into a way of recovery again. A final is it too much what we are asking? Well, why, uh, is Turkey, why is Turkey insisting that we should begin immediately? What is the reason behind this insistence which shows no sensitivity? And this is not an enmity language, as you say, All right. because you haven't seen yet well, our government I, be, I, uh, dealing with this matter. I, I, I am interested uh, in the degree to which you put great faith and great uh, store by the, the democratic voice of your own people. All of the polls suggest that right now many of your own compatriots are fed up with the euro. 
In some polls, a majority want to get out of the euro. Your own archbishop in Nicosia says it's time to leave. Paul Krugman, a leading Keynesian economist in the US, says leaving the euro would greatly speed up Cyprus's rebuilding process. Do you believe it may come to that? No. I am personally against leaving the euro. First of all, because there is no alternative. I know well, there is an means. alternative. Obviously, you can restore the pound, you can devalue, yeah. you can help your own tourism industry, you can help your own real estate industry, you can actually perhaps persuade your own people and outside investors that there's a brighter future with a Cypriot pound. Well, I don't share this view. I consider that uh, by leaving the euro at the moment, our currency, as you said, will be devalued. Will devalue to such, a, such extent that a country that depends entirely on imports, imports of raw material, imports of petrol, imports of medicines, imports of infrastructure uh, for um, for enterprises, then who is going to pay for all of this? This is going to be a terrible economic mistake. Besides the political advantages of remaining within the European family and the eurozone. We have to end there. But Yanis Kasolidis, thank you very much indeed for being on Hard Talk. Thank you very much too. Thank you, Minister.